इंटरेस्टिंग है दिस इज एक्साइटिंग इन केस द प्रीज लाइक माई सेल्फ डू नॉट स्पीक Vietnamese. I'm sorry, but I'm teaching a lot of Vietnamese language. And one lady simply want to have confession. Can the priest use an interpreter? Yes or no? Can the priest use an interpreter? This is what the canon law says. An interpreter, if there is one present... Is also uh, uh, okay. The sacrament. Is, where is that? Not one. I have. Uh, oh, here, here. A priest can obs- can use an interpreter. But an interpreter, if there is one present, is obliged to preserve the secret and also all others to whom knowledge of sins from confession shall come in any way. But in my case, I am very conservative about this. I am very conservative about this. I still do not trust. No, not that I do not trust, but you know, whatever is... Confessed in there by over your dead body, a priest not reveal it, even though being coerced by any military force. Because whatever is confessed, the seal of confession preserves that secrecy. It is also, I was really kind of surprised by it. An interpreter could be used, but they have to be instructed in accordance with what is the solemnity and the secrecy of sacrament of penance and reconciliation or confession. My last point about anointing of the sick. There used to be a time when we call it extreme unction. But now we call it the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. The anointing are to be carefully performed while observing the words, the order, and the manner prescribed in the liturgical books. Remember, just like Deacon Albert said, also in the sacrament of uh, baptism, you have to use the right formula. To this holy anointing, may the Lord in His love and mercy fill you with the grace of the Holy Spirit, and may He who forgive you of your sins fill you and raise you up. That is the valid formula. If the priest does not know the formula, he should have a, a book with him. It is not valid when he says, "Mary, by the power bestowed upon me, I hope you get well." <laughs> your anointing of the sick is not valid. Because the formula is not used correctly. And the minister is to perform the anointing with his own hands. Unless a serious reason persuades him to use an instrument. Must be used by your own hands. And the sacrament is to be conferred upon six. Persons who requested it at least implicitly when they were in control of their faculties. I know some of you, uh, for pastoral reasons, I have encountered situation in which uh, somebody say, "Father, my husband or my wife is not baptized Catholic, but he or she had been coming to church." Can you? And I ask you to anoint him or her. Is that pastorally valid? First of all, it should be the person who should said, "I want to be anointed." I want to be anointed, okay. And also, the sacrament of the anointing should be 
celebrated when the person is still conscious. Sometimes we wait for the last minute and, peop and the person who is sick no longer know what is going around. So just because the family want him or her to be anointed, I'm sorry to, dis I'm sorry to disappoint you, but there is no instant way to heaven. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Well, I, I think I only got a couple of minutes left in here because I want to give five minutes of question and answer. I'm just going to cover marriage really quick. Um, first things first is preparation for marriage. I know you guys are still way off, right? Do you plan on getting married soon? Yes. Yes? <laughs> wow. Really? No, not that soon, okay? Maybe 20 years from now. Okay, all right. So 20 years from now. Here's something to remember 20 years from now. There is at least, in our parish, there is at least a month to a year preparation required for the sacrament of marriage. So if, let's say, for example, your birthday is next month, not you, you're too young. Mary, let's say you want to get remarried and it's your birthday next month and you found this really wonderful guy and you want to get married because you're so much in love. You think we're going to... You think you're going to marry this person? We're going to allow you to marry this person? No way, right? Okay. That's because there's a lot of preparations involved. There's a lot of forms to be filled up. There's this form A for the, 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 the bride and the groom. There's this form B for the witnesses. And speaking of witnesses or the sponsors, there's also a requirement for them. You know, they have to be fully initiated and all those things. There's questionnaires in there. So we can't just say, okay, you know, it's, it's a simple ceremony. There's nothing's going to happen. But there's a lot, especially what's important is, is there an impediment? That means, is there something that's stopping you from getting married in the Catholic Church? And those are all in here. I was going to cover that, but because of time, um, we'll probably cover that in a question and answer. Impediments are, for example, if you've been previously married, even outside the church, and you want to get, and you were divorced there, and you want to get married in the church, there's what they call an annulment process, and there's different type of annulments for that. There's different ways about it. Talking about sponsors, similarly to like the baptism, you know, again, giving my culture as an example, we're very well known with having like 24 pairs of, you're sort of laughing because you've seen that, right? 24 pairs of witnesses or, or sponsors in here for the marriage, right? And then when they line up in there, you have 12, you know, uh, for the bride and 12 for the groom. Only two are allowed to sign on the marriage certificate. Again, those two are the ones who are supposed to be fully initiated and everything. Again, you know, sometimes it becomes a problem because you have all these 24 people in the uh, invitation that shows as sponsors or godfathers or something. But according to Code of Canon Law, not all names can be put in there. Okay? Uh, what other thing we can think of, Dick and Dave, before we go to question and answer in here? Convalidation. Okay. Convalidation, for example, uh, you've been married in this... In, in, you know, in Las Vegas or Reno, civilly or something, but you know, you're both ready to do it in the Catholic Church. We can convalidate that marriage in the Catholic Church. Again, there's still you still have to go through all those forms and everything in the preparation before you can get your marriage convalidated. It's it's less requirement than getting married directly. I don't know if, if am I making myself sense, will it? But 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 that that's another uh, form of marriage that we're doing in the Catholic Church. I think that's pretty much what we have. So do you have any questions that you want answered in here? And what we're going to do is we're going to have another mic. Deacon Dave and I will try to answer it. And I think Father Leo has already left for his Bible study. If you do, we'll probably take a couple of questions. Thank you, Dave. I have, I have one question in regards to the celebration of Mass. What is an oratory? An oratory. Father? You want me to answer? Okay. An oratory is a place that um, has been established as a, it's not a parish, but it's a place where mass can take place. It's... Um, the one that comes to mind immediately is the one in Birmingham that um, Cardinal Newman established. 
Christians, San Damian, yeah, be a house of prayer. So therefore, mass can take place in that. So it would be an oratory. No, not just any old park. Um, my question is about baptism. I, you, you said that you didn't have one person needed to be baptized, confirmed, and, and um, first Holy Communion all the way through. The other person does that, does that other person have to be Catholic? I, this is a question because I have there's there's kids that want to have their kids or sure. friends and doing being their godparent. Did you I, can uh, have someone that's a witness that's a Christian. Okay, that's just that's just a witness, so yeah. it's not really a godparent. It's not a godparent, be a witness. They can be there, they can come forward, they can be part of it. But the person who is confirmed would be the would be the person who So they're still part of the ceremony, but you do have to have uh, somebody that But you must have someone who is at least one person must be confirmed. Now I had a boyfriend and I've been with him for a long time and I wanted to get married and the doctor said I'm going to leave that with Father Leo. <laughs> you get three months to live and she wants to get married. Is she Catholic? Uh, in in, the, in the, uh, the marriage tribunal can help us rectify that. But of course, before going to that, I know it is in, in, in cases of extreme necessity. Hmm? <laughs> She had to give us the medical certificate. <laughs> you know, two months to live. But my question, how he approached that, is that uh, why did he, she had to postpone to the last minute? Hmm? She had all these opportunities to prepare and rectify her marriage. Why did she had to wait for the last minute? It's not like at Constantinople that eventually after he was baptized, he became, he went up to heaven. But that is the reason why education is really important. Education, to educate our people about the importance of these things. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes people are misled. Mm -hmm. So it depends again on the pastor, the priest, how he, uh, and the clergy, how he educates his people, enlightening them about these situations. And that's what we are doing. Okay. Probably have not answered totally your question. Huh? <laughs> you got something to say, Father Sean? Has there any other questions? have a question. How many times in one day can you receive the Holy Eucharist? How many times a day can you receive the Eucharist? According to the Code of Canon Law, you can receive every time you attend a Mass. But with different intentions. Okay? Like for example, you are attending the 7.30 and that's, you are faithfully coming to the 7.30 Mass. Okay, that's your personal intention. You have learned that you are attending a funeral for a friend. Okay, you can offer your intention for that person. You can receive another communion. And if you were invited later in the afternoon, you discover that the wedding that you're going to attend with your wife, it's not at five, but it's earlier than five, which does not qualify for a vigil Sunday Mass. So it's still considered as a Saturday. So you're attending for the third time. You can still receive communion. <laughs> 